Hello, my name is Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie. Um, elsewhere on this channel, I am pretty much devoting all these videos to Zappa. I've ranked and reviewed every single Frank Zappa album release. I'm currently in the midst of uh, ranking his tours. I'm literally at the halfway point of the 26 tours. I've done 14. I have yet to commit to 13. I know what it is, but I'm at that point in the list where like the difference between tours is I don't like two songs on this tour and I only don't like one song on this tour. Hence, this one is better because they're all ridiculous, but whatever. Um, this is just a list of my top 10 albums of 2021. Um, I listened to a lot of other music and I found that most of my most of my interests were either really heavy metal, a lot of black metal, a lot of just experimental metal, or really chill sort of 70s soft rock. Very little in between, but these are the 10 albums I listened to the most this past year, this pandemic year. So anyways, from 10 to number one. Number 10, Goat Girl on All Fours. This is an English band. Uh, this is their second album. Very sort of... Uh, how did I describe it? A little, very like indie rock, but a little dance, a little post-punk, a little, uh, very, has a very good stereo lab vibe. Um, this came out back in January. I think it was one of the first releases of 2021 and it kind of just stayed in my regular rotation the entire year. Um, absolutely love it. Has kind of a chill vibe, but at the same time, it's, it's engaging and worth listening to. Um, number nine, Godspeed, you black emperor. Uh, God's P at State's End. This is like every other Godspeed You Black Emperor album. Really long sort of post-rock instrumental jams interspersed with these sort of music concrete sort of noise ambient things. I think this has not much different than any other Godspeed um, album. If you like Godspeed, you should love this album. If you don't like Godspeed, you're not going to like this one. Um, but I think this has their one of their best like grooves, the opening Job's Lament. I think that's what it's called, Job's Lament. And then the final uh, song is probably one of their most celebratory, just like, woo, very uh, upbeat for 2021, um, but an excellent Godspeed record. Number eight, Fluisterars. Sorry if I mispronounced this. Gegren dor de gist der zilfen lukin zilts. Zilsten looking. I have not done any sort of research other than just listen to this. This is a black metal album. Your typical black metal of the current of like 2021 where you kind of black metal is the airport from which it launches and it goes off into a whole bunch of different places. Um, a lot of really sort of jubilant, very positive black metal screaming towards the latter half of this album. Um, and just some really interesting detours into sort of like Kind of like Rushish, late seventies Rushish, like atmospheric prog type thing, but um, overall just a really fun album. Um, uh, number seven, the Hold Steady, Open Door Policy, eight albums in, and Craig Finn is still writing some of the best lyrics in all of music. Um, I think the opening one, the one-two punch of the opening two songs is just some of the best lyrics, some of the best music, the slide guitar when it comes in on that opening song, just the sort of dark jam of the entire second song. Um, Spices, I think is the name of the second song. Just an all-around fun album. Definitely a little more experimental musically. Not your typical sort of bar rock that the Hold Steady does, but in line with a lot of the stuff they've been doing recently, but I think this one has some of the best some of the best musical detours. And again, the lyrics are just ridiculous. Craig Finn is the best lyricist in rock. If you have not checked out The Hold Steady, go back to their first like three albums, which are near perfect. Um, this is probably not as good as those first three, um, but um, Almost Killed Me, uh, Separation Sunday, which is just almost perfect, uh, Boys and Girls in America. But this might be their fourth best. Eight albums in. This is a really strong album uh, for me. Um, number six, Crisis, The Hour of Crisis. Crisis is a producer, beat maker, essentially, in hip-hop. And so this album is essentially a whole bunch of guest appearances with Crisis coming up with some really good grooves, a little bit of jazz, a little bit of gospel, a little bit of sort of uh, straightforward rap. Um, the best part about this is some of the guests are, I think, De La Soul is on here, Busta Rhymes, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. So it's got a very 90s vibe, which I appreciate because I think that's my sweet spot as far as hip hop goes. Um, so this is a really good album. Just a 45 minute sort of sampler of everything Crisis does. Um, he's got a lot of really good albums, but this was, I think, one of his most concise sort of like 
a really good sampling of his production skills and just really awesome sort of hip hop music album. Um, number five, The Weather Station. This is definitely sort of a, reminds me of Talk Talk in the 80s. It's definitely not as experimental and the songs are definitely more formed and more cohesive than those Talk Talk albums. Um, but um, it has sort of a Talk Talk vibe, sort of a jazzy sort of vibe. Um, very like the uh, female vocalist with some very sort of like almost like late 70s Joni Mitchell, Ricky Lee Jones type, even an 80s vibe, like a Motels and they're more like, no, I just really good vocals, really smooth, kind of easy listening, but not really engaging. Um, it's definitely one of those like today here in Texas, it's really cold and it's raining and it's gray and it's miserable outside. Um, it just fit this morning. I listened to it this morning. Just fit that vibe. It made it nice and warm in here. Made the coffee taste better. Um, made the biscuits taste better. We made biscuits this morning. So anyways, uh, really good. Still really good. Really good uh, album. Number four. Um, so three of these next four artists are pretty much on my top ten list anytime they release an album. Number four, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, LW. This is the follow-up to last year's KG. It starts off with that same sort of noise that KG ends with. And then you get a whole bunch of typical psych rock that uh, you know King, King Gizzard does. And then the last song is a doom version of the opening track from uh, KG. So like it's essentially the second half of a double album with KG LW being the double album. Just a phenomenal listen. And King Gizzard continuing to like just release albums every year that are just phenomenal. Um, psych rock. Um, I would say that, and my, my number three supports this. I would say that currently in music, uh, psych rock, especially thanks to sort of Australia, West coast mainly, um, and, uh, the West coast of, uh, California, San Francisco, even LA, um, like they're bringing some of the best psych music ever, you know, they're creating now. And I also think black metal from pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, those two genres, psych and black metal are just like, by far the most interesting and most creative and most like pushing boundaries, which gets me to my number three, three Kralis. Um, I think every time they've released an album, it's been my top 10 list. Demonic Wealth, um, Kralis, Kralis. Um, again, this is a New York black metal band, relentlessly experimental. This really is like, black metal is literally just the airport from which they depart from. And then they just do a bunch of whole other crazy things and eventually they land in black metal. And there are like jams on here that seems almost like, seem almost like Pink Floyd-ish, like, you know, keyboards and just a lot of more amb ambient noises. But underneath you just got this relentless, like just like drums, just playing this like black metal the entire time. Um, just ridiculous. Kralis, anything in their catalog is ridiculous. But again, they have once again managed to put out an album that is like better than most of the stuff released on any given year. Um, number two, easily my most listened to album of the year. Uh, number one was sort of... Uh, like 80 minutes long, so I didn't, and I always like to listen to things in, in their completion, so I didn't listen to it as much as this one, uh, but number two, Faye Webster, I Know I'm Funny, haha, <laughs> um, this is just, yeah, this is just like Linda Ronstamp, Blue Bayou, 70s vibes, really nice pedal steel guitar, she is funny, her lyrics are pretty funny, um, not very wordy, pretty concise, short of like, you know, the verses are pretty short, um, you know, she's not like going on. It's not like a uh, sun kill moon where you have like a novel on each song. Um, but just, I don't know. This is another one that on days like this just makes me feel so good and so comfortable and definitely evokes late 70s vibes for me, which is sort of the sweet spot um, in my life as far as music I love. And then number one, they have made my list many, many times and it is fucked up Year of the Horse. Um, this is another one in their series of Year of Releases. Um, they've done EPs, they've done albums. This is four 20-minute segments, and each segment runs through the gamut from punk to art punk to like spoken word to just sort of ambient stuff to new metal. There's a new metal jam at the end of, I think, side two or part two that it's just sounds like it could be just some really bad late 90s stuff, but it actually works. Um, it is probably the most... Zap, a lot of these are Zappa-esque. I think like uh, Fucked Up has a very 
Weasels Rip My Flesh, almost Uncle Meat flavor and that it's all over the map. The Kralis album, Demonic Wealth, almost is like the Weasels Rip My Flesh of like black metal to tie this all back to Zappa. Um, so anyways, yeah, number one, Fucked Up Beer of the Horse. Um, those are just quickly my 10 favorite albums of the year. Um, a lot of really good re-releases this year. If you're a jazz fan, um, and you have not heard that John Coltrane Love Supreme release, I think from uh, that came out earlier this year. That is one of the best things ever. There is a lot of good archival releases. Um, but for new music, new music only, those were my top 10 favorite albums of 2021 for what it's worth. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've heard these and agree, let me know. If you have different ones, let me know because I'm always, always, always looking to check out new music. So anyways, thanks for watching. Peace. Take care, y'all.